Do you know what it is? I know what it is. What is it? It's a Bates Corliss. <laughs> oh, really? Are you happy? There. Okay, good. Number two. Heavier model baits. I'm loving it. Oh, it's all I'm there. I'm loving the broken flower. Oh, it's, it's all flower. there. Look, so I got this catalog because I think that's where my base was bought from. Smith Courtney. It's got the tag on. It's all there? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, look at the oil. Look, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to make some work, but it ain't bad at all. But are you happy? Very happy. We'll do that ramp now.
but we're at a an old sawmill site and here is a steam pump there's more stuff over this way that we haven't seen yet in the weeds but what we've got here clear over there we got a Justin and right here we got a looks like an eight foot flywheel one piece on a side crank engine and the engine is a Houston Stanwood and Gamble I don't know the size on it yet but it's a pretty good size engine it's not light so we're going to do some more check in here and see if we can get a born stroke off of it uh, someone has broke it as you can see it's broke here but it's been broke again so the building fell in on what happened so but we'll see if we can get this thing out of here eventually uh, we're not getting it this trip but i think we're gonna get another trip but this is the biggest slide valve engine i've ever seen i think this is bigger than than my uh i think it's bigger than my Taylor Ironworks Schofield engine, but it may not be, but we'll know here shortly. So, okay, this is one engine. Oh, God. What the hell am I doing on the ground? Oh. oh. Fell down, ripped my pants. All right, so. Let me show you what else we found. So here's two planers. These are Newman out of Greensboro. That one's a 500. I'm not sure what this one is. Yeah, it's a Newman also. It's an M18. I mean, M46 or 48. This one here is just like mine. They're here. I don't see any cutters on them. As you can see the electric motor. That motor actually was running both units. So that's, I don't know how many horsepower it is, but it's got to be up there because I think it takes about 70 horsepower to run one of these. Okay, there's a blower. It would have blew the uh, sawdust over into the boiler room probably, or a room beside the boiler room. We've got tracks on the ground. We've got an air compressor. Then we got the, the room that I really like. There's a resaw blade. So they had a big resaw here somewhere. We got a generator here. This is an AC with a DC exciter on the end, flat belt driven. And then we got another one here. That is a DC exciter on the end. Uh, really nice setup here. Right, so over here we got our control box, which you know none of our other stuff has had a panel box. And I don't know what half this is, except I know these are switches. And uh, it all works off of this main switch. We've got three fuses down here. Another. This probably kicks in the fields, and then this would be your rheostat. And we got our gauges up here. Really neat unit. Uh, drove off of V-belts here. <laughs> Been sitting for a long time. Electro, electrical Equipment Company, Raleigh, North Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Richmond, Virginia. Elect okay, that might, maybe that was who sold it. General Electric. That's what it oh, is. it is a General Electric? Yeah. Okay. It's a GE. Yeah. But it was made in the south here. Yeah, somebody snagged the coppers, what they've done. Yeah, they did. Yeah. That's okay. 240 volt. Three phase. Yeah, they cut it right here, too. 60 cycles. And this only spins at 720 RPM. <laughs> 720 okay <laughs> that is crazy so this thing to give you an idea is probably what four and a half foot tall close to five foot mm -hmm. so it's a big big machine and somebody well they cut it here too so they cut some of the field wires to go 
to steal. Yeah. Steal thieves. There's your field. The field wires. From yeah. Your DC exciter. That's DC exciter. Yeah. So that's gonna go. Now we got Scott. Right here. Right here. So you got two more. Why'd they cut them for? Well, it almost looks like there's a tag under a tag. Well, it might be might just, be just rust bolts Anyway, who wants the air compressor? You can have it if you can get it done. Without killing yourself. Yeah, you can't kill yourself. All right, in case I didn't show you this side of this engine. So all that's concrete foundation at the bottom down here. And all we got is a big block bearing. That looks like about a seven inch crankshaft. It's a big one. And like I said, eight foot flywheel. And one piece, so we can't take it apart. All right, folks, here's what we got loaded up. It is a coreless 12 by 36, which is two inches smaller bore than my big baits. This is also a baits, and it's got the tag on it. And this was made in uh, Joliet, Illinois, just like the other one. This was bought at the Smith Courtney Company, which I have a catalog for that shows these engines in them. And uh, got the governor. It's all there. And uh, we've got our strap down good and loaded. Got one issue on the flywheel that we did not do, but the guy I bought it from did do by accident. He did break a spoke, which is terrible. But what we'll do is we'll drill from the backside and we'll we'll do the repair on that and bolt it and then we'll weld it and finish it off. But uh, this is a latching coreless, so this is not the toggle valve, the rare one like my like my other one, but it's a neat engine. So I'll show you more on this when we get back. So we're loaded up with the old 52 Rogers low boy. And we got Justin, we got Scott driving. And Justin's come along and helped and worked. Well, okay, he's here. He's sitting in the shed now. But uh, I think he's a spy for Cold War Motors. Is that's what it, right. You're right. That's right. what it is. He's trying to figure out what I'm doing here, and I'm. Right. He thinks I'm gonna put this in that Studebaker. Yep. So anyway, we do have the block burn for the outside too. But I think this one's only a six or five inch or something. It's smaller. But here we go. We got her. And uh, we're going to get to heading back. we got 170 miles to go. All right. Winds are back that way. It is. This is what an utterly confused man looks like. Very confused. Utterly confused. I don't know what utterly means, but it, it's confusing. Utter's on a cow. Utter's yep. on a cow. Utterly's when you go ding, ding, ding with the utter. All right, folks. I think we've got... I don't know. We're not too far from home, but we've come a long ways. 170 miles one way, and uh, everything seems to be doing good so far. And uh, the trailer's holding up pretty good, and we ain't lost anything yet. I don't think anything broke or fell off, so. All right, I'll show you more when we'll get home. Okay, folks, dark as can be, but we're back. Uh, this thing's got some pinstripes, some writing and stuff on the side of it. That we'll know more about later and we'll try to cipher it out here and uh anyway nice engine got you know a few issues that i'll show you later on another video but uh yeah i'm i'm stoked to find another engine and i'll tell you the story of how i found this engine and it's just it's just unbelievable it's crazy how things happen but uh anyway appreciate everybody watching till next time bye